Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at operations with power series. Now, we've already gone ahead and described what a power series is and how it's related to particular functions that we have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see that we can actually apply certain operations to the power series because, of course, the power series is actually equal to the function on its interval of convergence. So notice that what we can do here, say for example, if f of x is equal to this power series and g of x is equal to that power series, well, I can just go ahead and say the function of kx is just going to be equal to this particular power series with kx replacing x raised to the n power. I can do the same thing here with x raised to the capital N power, and notice the cap x to the capital N power is just replacing x, or f of x, well, in f of x. And I can also go ahead and n subtract two different power series to come up with this expression here, and notice the only thing that I'm adding is the a sub n plus or minus the b sub n. And I can also go ahead and take the derivative, and also the integral. Now the integral is going to look a slightly different because I'm, I've already gone ahead and perform the anti-differentiation of the power series here, of that. And notice that I've also incorporated the constant of integration. Now, the one thing that we have to keep in mind throughout this entire process is that you have to make sure that you remain within the, uh, the interval of convergence. Okay, because that is the only place where the power series expansion and the function are actually equal. If you go beyond that, they're not equal, and so all of a sudden you're not going to be able to do some of these operations. You're not going to be able to do those operations on the power series. So, the one that we have to pay particular attention to, though, is C. Now, C is the only one that actually involves two different power series expansions of two different functions. So, what we have to do then is we need to actually go ahead and make sure that if we go ahead and consider the interval of convergence of f of x plus g of x, we need to make sure to look at the individual interval of convergences and make sure to take the intersection of those two. Because it's only at the intersection of those two interval of convergences where these two functions, the sum or difference of these two functions, will actually remain equal. Now, with these operations as well, they may affect the convergence at the endpoint, so you need to just be careful about that as well. Now, let's see the power of these operations with power series. And let's just take a look, say, for example, at our basic list here, e to the x sine x, r 10 x, natural log of x plus 1, and 1 plus x raised to the p power. Now, I'll just go ahead and take a look at, say, for example, f of x is equal to e to the x, and we know that it has the power series expansion of this here, where the radius of convergence, of course, is infinity. So in other words, our interval of convergence is all real numbers. Now, what I can do then, is I can actually go ahead, if I wanted to find the power series expansion of e to the 3x, well, I know that that's just going to be the same thing as f of 3x, which is equal to e to the 3x, and therefore, instead of the x raised to the n, if I substitute that with 3x raised to the n, I can come up with this power series expansion, which is the power series expansion of e to the 3x. And notice that I didn't have to go through that whole long process of determining exactly what that power series will look like from scratch. So, even in the case of f of x squared, I can go ahead and say that this is going to be e to the x squared, and notice that I can come up with that particular power series so quickly. I can come up with that so quickly, so long as I know what this particular basic uh, power series expansion is, and know what the interval of convergence is. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another example here of f of x equals sine of x. And I know that this is the power series expansion, and notice again the nice thing is that the radius of convergence is infinity, and therefore for all x, this and this are exactly the same. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and find the power series expansion of the cosine of x, well, would I want to start from scratch? No, don't start from scratch. Just go ahead and take a look at f prime of x, which we know is going to be the derivative of the sine of x, which is going to be cosine of x. And if I go ahead and take the derivative of that, then I come up with this particular power series expansion, which sure enough is the power series expansion of the cosine of x for all values of x.
Okay, so let's just wrap up again. Notice that we do have operations with power series and these operations are going to apply. The main thing is that we have to make sure that we stay within the interval of convergence because that is the only place where the function is actually equal to the power series. Uh, with regards to C, just be careful that we're looking at the intersection of the interval of uh, power series, uh, the intersection of the interval of convergences for the respective power series, and also make sure that you be careful of the endpoints. Now, so long as we go ahead and make sure that we remember the basic list of power series expansions for these particular functions there, then we should be able to come up with a lot of different power series expansions without having to go through the whole process from scratch. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of these as well the next time that we meet in class. See you then. Bye-bye.